Hello everyone and welcome back to I the Somnium Files. In the last session, we synced with Iris. And uh, wow, that was an experience. <laughs> that was very, very strange. And we have a lot of questions. Uh, and so, who should we start talking to first? Let's start talking to Ota. Uh, where's Mama? Oh, she left a little while ago. She said something about going to help an acquaintance. She told me to watch the place until she got back. How well do you know Mama? Not at all. It's my first time here. I wasn't particularly surprised. Mama's always depended on the kindness of strangers ever since she opened Marble. Never thought I'd run into you here. I was niling with Tessa earlier. She said she was going to Marble, so... I got here just before you did. Look. I was really worried about her. You fucking weirdo. <laughs> she was about to be charged with a serious crime. Oh my god, this kid. I really don't like this kid. Isn't your phone broken? No, this is my new one. You're thinking of the one I dropped in that puddle. Allow me to break this one too. What was that thing about? This actually works out nicely. I want to ask you something, Ota. It's about a Nile message you sent Iris. You said you wouldn't tell anyone about that thing. That you'd stay quiet no matter what. What were you talking about? You little shit. Well, uh... <laughs> you ain't staying quiet, mate. I'll tell her about the two witter thing. I swear I'll do it. Jeez, fine. Just don't tell anyone else, okay? Okay. But before I tell you... Who's that? What? At the door. Someone's standing outside. What? You motherfucker! Okay, well I guess I don't get to talk to Iris then. What the fuck? Day four, Monday. Jukai? Man, I wish it wouldn't... I wish it would show me, like, what one is going to advance the story so that I can do everything else and then advance the story. Because, like, Iris presumably had a fair bit of dialogue I could have gone through there and it just screws me out of it. When I woke up, I was lying on the sofa... <sighs> Where am I? My head was killing me and my memory was foggy. I felt a sudden pain in my neck. I shot up rubbing my neck. When I looked over at the counter I saw a monster staring back at me. What? It took me a few seconds before I realized it was just Mama. How Looks dare like you? you're awake now. As Mama spoke to me, it all came rushing back. I remembered everything. Where's Ota? Ota? The boy I asked to watch the bar? I'd say he's too old to be called a boy, but yeah. He was already gone when I came back. All I saw was you getting your beauty sleep on the floor. Damn it, Ota. What are you thinking? It appears that he took off with Iris. What were you doing during all this? My power was shut down due to the stun gun. I have rebooted in safe mode and am now operational. <laughs> rebooted in safe mode. Um, what time is it? It'll be three o'clock soon. In the morning, of course. Why didn't you wake me up? I tried. You wouldn't budge. I thought you were passed out drunk, so I left you like that. But I didn't have a glass in front of me, right? So you weren't drunk? No, I got fucking tased! Didn't have a single drop. Oh, I'm gonna kill I Ota. Drinking straight out of the bottle. I'm going to murder Ota. Just like the old days. Date, the boss is calling. Oh, how am I going to report this one? Date, listen. Stay calm, but this is an emergency. Okay. Just now, the killer... 
Well, just watch the video. I sent the address to Iba. What? Iris. No, that's... The criminal is streaming this live. Oh my god. Iba, the source. Identify. The Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse, Koto District. Okiura? Date, focus. She's already had her eye ripped out. What the fuck? We need to get to the site, now. I thanked Mama and ran out of marble. She's already had her eye ripped out. What? I, eh? Eh? What's our ETA? Our destination is far from here. 20 minutes is the fastest. Please, please let me make it in time. <sighs> that sick bastard. What the fuck? Uh... Um, is, is, it's a fucking polar bear? What? <laughs> I mean... Tessa! Hold on! I'll save you! Hota! Is this one of his fucking setup things like he does on Twitter but large scale or something? Like, is he an actual psychopath? I kept my foot to the gas the whole time. Like, on, on Twitter, he sets up people attacking her and then defends her. And they're all him. Is this like a large scale psychopathic version of that? Where he's got people actually attacking her and then they'll take a fall when he, like, tries to defend her or something? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> What's going on? I could feel the sweat on my palms. The engine raised a high-pitched scream, but I could barely hear it. My heartbeat was pounding in my ears, shaking me to the core. How much time had passed? The feeling of time itself had disappeared. Eventually, the car reached a long bridge. Shortly after, the image changed. Polar bear again. No, it can't be. No. Stop. Is this actually happening? Ah! What the fuck, man? Why couldn't it have been Ota? What the shit? <laughs> she actually dead? What? No! I I I, I cannot believe. I'm in fact in disbelief. Harbour Warehouse District. What the shit? I mean, maybe shut the car door. Also, check your corners, because Mr. Polar Bear's in here? Wait, what? I am so, so lost. <laughs> what is going on? Okay, so... It was just the polar bear suit that's cut in half, right? Wait, is that... 
Is that Ota? Ota. Oh my god, he it, it, it did, it did do it to Ota as well. What the fuck? What the fuck? I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I, I actually genuinely cannot believe what I'm seeing here. <laughs> they just fucking... What? What? He's like, I won't tell your secret. And then fucking tases me. And then we time jump like a few hours later. And they're both being fucking sword in half. <laughs> what, what happened in those hours? What is going on? This is insanity. We were just fucking interviewing her here. There you are. Finally. I was looking all over for you. It's rare to see you down like this. Motherfucker, <laughs> do you know what kind of day I've just had? But it's understandable. You blame yourself for this, don't you? Beating yourself up about taking Iris to marble. And about letting Ota get the upper hand on you. Am I right? Shall I tell you what Investigation HQ thinks? Ota Matsushita is a criminal stalker who committed murder-suicide. I mean... I could Ota believe it. Ota had a selfish love for Iris. But I don't think it's true, but I could believe it. He was under the delusion that Iris loved him too. But Iris refused Ota. So Ota decided that he and Iris should be together in the afterlife, killed her, then killed himself. I mean, to be fair, him and the polar bear were never on screen at the same time. That's ridiculous. Ota would never kill Iris. Ah, uh, well, I mean, if he was a psycho, then... And how Maybe. do you explain the other two murders? Iris's left eye was hollowed out. I can't believe! I can't believe, like... I originally didn't think she was going to be a particularly main character, and then it seemed like, okay, maybe she is going to be a main character. And then I really started liking her. Didn't like Ota much, but I really liked Iris. And then it's like starting to accuse her of doing murders and shit, and I'm like, I'm backing her, I'm like, there's no way she did it, there's no way she did it, and then I'm like, oh my god, are they actually taking the route that she did do it? I don't know, and I was like, surprised by that, but it seemed like we were okay, and then suddenly, this person that I've, this character that I've just started to really like <laughs> gets their fucking eye gouged out and then they get sawn in half. Just like Renju and Shoko. Those three murders were definitely executed by the same person. The new Cyclops killer. There's no way that's Ota. Too many pieces don't fit. Too many contradictions, like killing Iris. Such as? Uh, Ota's behavior during the video? Stay away from Tessa! Ota showed himself on the stream. If he was going to kill Iris and then himself, why would he do that? To have himself be the hero? The only reason you would show yourself like that is to prove that you weren't the culprit. Ota and the polar bear on the screen at the same time would prove that they're not the same person. Yeah, but they won. That behavior would be totally unnecessary if he was going to commit suicide anyway. Well, maybe he wasn't planning on dying at first. After he killed Iris, he realized that he couldn't live with himself. I mean, I don't think so he, he did it. So he lies down on the workbench and turns on the ice cutting machine himself? I don't buy it. But like, I can see why they would. Uh, what about the polar bear costume? The culprit was wearing a polar bear costume, probably to hide their identity. But if murder-suicide was the plan, the costume served no purpose. Ota had no incentive to kill Renju. Maybe he was thinking like this. The reason Iris and I can't be together is because her agency prohibits it. Making the president, Renju, the ultimate bad guy in his mind. Mizuki is Ota's close friend. Do you really think Ota would kill his friend's father? Maybe. Shoko was married to Renju. Maybe he was trying to get at Renju by killing her. That's a stretch. They've been divorced for years. 
Ota knows all about it. He wouldn't use Shoko to get to Renju. There are some additional discrepancies. I analyzed the investigation report. Judging by his wound, Ota was stabbed in the side by a kitchen knife or something similar. Oh? Are you sure? I am. I told the boss what I found. Oh, I know that. Well? Ota could have stabbed himself. Yeah, I mean, that's getting pretty fucking far from reality at this point, isn't it? Maybe he thought it would be a fatal wound, but when it didn't work, he went for the ice cutting machine. When you want to fatally wound yourself, you don't stab yourself in the side. Then shouldn't we have recovered the kitchen knife from the scene? Maybe he threw it in the ocean. Boss, come on. Ota goes out to the water, stabs himself in the gut, throws the knife over the side, then walks back to the warehouse? Well, I wasn't being serious. <laughs> I didn't think Ota was the culprit from the beginning. Then why have you been fucking going on about it? I was just playing devil's advocate for HQ. Really? Yes, really. Anyway, Ota didn't kill anyone, and he didn't kill himself. Here's what I think happened. Stay away from Tessa! Ota knew Iris was kidnapped, so he rushed onto the scene. That's when he saw the culprit wearing the polar bear costume. He tried to fight him off, but ended up being stabbed in the side. He was weakened and losing blood at the culprit's mercy. The culprit forced him into the costume, then under the ice cutting machine. And then... And then Ripperoni. Then... who is the culprit? We don't know. I wish I knew. We're up to four victims. But Ota was a special circumstance. He wasn't specifically targeted by the culprit. Right. And he was the only one to not have his eye pulled out. So let's focus on the three other victims. Shoko, Renju, and Iris. What connects these three? Uh, I mean, obviously, Shoko and Renju were husband and wife, and then she is she worked for Renju, so they're all part of the same... Like, network. Connections. If you find a connection between the victims, you find a connection to the culprit. That's the theory of investigation, right? You think the new Cyclops killer is related to them somehow? Maybe, maybe not. But it's a good starting point. I mean, it's pretty rare for someone to just murder someone randomly, right? Like, very rare. There is, or it's always someone that knows them. Like, it is super duper rare for someone to just go out and kill, like, someone they don't actually know. It's usually a premeditated thing that is someone they know and for a specific reason. But I don't know. Can't, I can't imagine what it would be here, but... Uh... It's not going to be MoMA. Iris's mother? No, she's too sweet. Mizuki, obviously not. Ota's mother? No, she's old. Oh, God, what, is it MoMA? Could it be MoMA? Like, she did come back, like, when we were, like, knocked out. So, could have done anything during that time? Renju and Shogo were connected to the Kumakuras. But there's no connection to Iris. Oh, sorry, that's Mama. What am I on about? That's Mama, not MoMA. <laughs> I was getting them confused. Don't. Uh, the congressman? No. Uh, well, maybe. Let's do. Let's go around. Let's see what they have to say about these. Mayumi had motive for killing Iris and Renju. Mayumi hated Iris, and she didn't think well of Lemnusgate either. Big fan of her own son, though. And since Renju is the president, anyway, the weak point is Renju's ex-wife Shoko. I can't imagine why Mayumi would kill her, and above all else, she would never harm her only son, let alone kill him. Mizuki has the strongest connections with all three victims. Shoko and Renji were her parents, and she was close friends with Iris. She was good friends with Ota, too. But that's why I could never believe Mizuki would kill all four of them. Thinking of her as a suspect is ridiculous. Also, she's far too young. Hitomi and Renji are definitely linked. They were high school classmates, and she did say that she met Shoko twice. But I can't imagine she would kill Iris in such a gruesome way. No matter what the circumstances were, 
It seems impossible to me. The boss is sitting in front of me. Renju, Shoko, and So. There is a connection between Renju and Shoko through the Kumakuras. But again, I can't see any clear link to Iris. Me? Uh-oh. I know Renju and Shoko, and I'm connected to Iris. But I have an alibi. Aside from Shoko, there's no way I could have killed any of them. No, now that I think about it, Shoko too. I don't remember killing her. My memories from six years ago are missing, but I still have my memory of recent events. And if I start doubting myself now... Date, I can say without a doubt that there is zero possibility you are the new Cyclops killer. I have been working with you for years. I know better than anyone that you are innocent. Okay, so what the fuck do we do now? I thought it over, boss. Of the people I know, I can't peg any of them as the murderer. And no leads to pursue? No. Then there's only one thing you can do. Continue your investigation. Do whatever it takes to get the culprit. To get justice for the victims. You're right. Got it, boss. I actually, I just, I cannot believe. I cannot believe she's dead. What the fuck? Both of them. What? What? Cold storage warehouse, I guess? What the actual fuck? Hey everyone, I stepped into the cold storage warehouse. The air conditioning wasn't running, but it was still cold, because it's cold storage. The temperature hadn't raised much at all. The cold air sunk into my skin, but the center of my body was burning hot. Oh my god. Any clues? Uh, no, nothing so far. Inspector's doing his duty as usual. Cardboard box on the floor, nothing in it. Is this Ota's blood? There are only a few items on the shelf. Is this warehouse not in use? Nothing particularly suspicious. Wooden box, empty. Oops. Any progress? I checked this place point by point, but didn't find nothing. Shells packed, no clues. Okay. Overhead crane, hook is hanging from the ceiling. Ice cutting machine, Iris and Ota were sliced in two by this ice cutting machine. Iris and Ota. Iris's estimated time of death and cause of death have been confirmed. Yeah, I can fucking confirm that for you. The video was not a recording. It was a live stream filmed in real time. Which means Iris's time of death is 3.20 a.m. Iris also had her left eye removed. Yeah. And like Renju and Shoko, Iris's left eyeball has not been recovered. Oh man. Heavy, heavy right shit. Here. Iris and Ota were... I am sure you are already aware of Ota's time of death. Just before I arrived. About 3.30 in the morning. And the cause of death. Right, about that. Ota had a stab wound from a kitchen knife in his side. Correct. What was the exact cause of death? I'm pretty sure it was being fucking cut in half, mate. Was it the knife wound, or...? I cannot determine that. I can conclude that the knife wound was at least close to being fatal. Even if Ota was still alive on the workbench, he was certainly on the verge of death. If he weren't already extremely weak, we would expect to see more signs of struggle. This is so A insane. Video camera and laptop. <laughs> this is so insane. This is what the criminal used to stream. The fucking polar bear man. <laughs> All of these items have been bought from pawn shops and thrift stores. It would be difficult to determine a suspect from them. 
I have logged into the Wi-Fi in this warehouse. Okiura Fishery Co. Ltd. is listed as the owner. However, I found the password written directly on the router. Anyone who saw it could have used it. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. Huh. No, actually. Oh? Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. Okay. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Uh, this forklift, forklift eh? is old. It does not appear to be functional. It has not been moved in some time. Forklift... Wait, there's more forklift, eh? Uh, the tire and floor are covered with a layer of ice. Forklift B. I don't see anything special. Okay, that's... That's pretty much it for this joint. Uh, but I can't leave, so there must be more. Maybe Oto was trying to help Iris. That led to a scuffle. He ended with the knife. Lost all his power. Forced him to put in the costume and then cut but open. why? Why did the culprit put the costume on Ota? Uh, no. For the banter? Oh. Date, we should get moving. Officers from the local jurisdiction are checking the warehouse thoroughly. We will not find anything of importance here. Okey yeah, doke. you're right. You can ask CSI to inform you if they find anything. Alright. I'm heading out. Let me know if you find anything. I let them know, then left the warehouse. Unreal, man. When I left the warehouse, I saw Pewter. What's he doing here? He walked up to me while I was trying to work it out. Date, I have to talk to you about something. Huh? About the original Cyclops serial killings. Oh, thank God. We're going to find out something at last. Why this all of a sudden? Because I want you to solve this case, Mr. Date. I want you to find who did this and bring them to justice. So, if I can help you, even a little. Why didn't you say anything at Abyss? The boss was there. I couldn't speak openly in front of her. So, I decided to meet you here. All right. Let's hear it. Earlier, I told you that I was completely certain the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Yep. I am absolutely certain the original Cyclops killer... Yeah. Let me explain why. I don't think we needed a flashback to that. I'll start by telling you the identity of the Cyclops killer. Although, it's more accurate to say, killers. More than one? In the first series of killings, the culprit had an accomplice. One of them was born a murderous psychopath. The other is Rohan Kumakura, the previous chairman of the Kumakuras. Huh. They each had a role to play. The murderer committed the homicide, and Rohan removed the eyeball. Wait, why wasn't it- Rohan's fucking jacked. Why wasn't he the one committing the homicide? Uh, who's the murderous psychopath? He was born with a brain dysfunction. Due to damage to the posterior pituitary gland, he was unable to properly secrete oxytocin. Oxytocin is a peptide hormone linked to feelings of love, affection, and trust. It is colloquially referred to as the love hormone. It causes a tranquilizing effect which improves mood and relieves stress. It is normally secreted when the body makes contact with an object of affection, such as an embrace or caress. I'm sure you know what this implies, but he was unable to feel love in the way that we do. However, he was able to experience a substitute 
His brain was wired in such a way that allowed him to feel satisfaction through other means. Due to the unique idiosyncrasies of his brain, he was able to release large amounts of dopamine and endorphins by performing a certain action. But, uh... What was it? Murder. Yep. Dopamine is a hormone linked to the reward system of the brain. The pleasant feeling attained through accomplishment is dopamine. Endorphins are a kind of brain narcotic. They dull pain and create a feeling of happiness. He got pleasure from killing people? It's slightly more complicated than that. Killing people was the only way he could get pleasure. He was 12 when he took his first life. Jesus! That enlightened him to the pleasure of murder, which he would do again and again. Why did he get classified? That, I don't know. The details of the original Cyclops serial killings case have become nebulous over time. Even the official investigation material contains nothing of value. I am unable to draw any conclusions from them. You really have no idea? If I did, I would tell you. Okay. Eighteen years ago, Rohan took a woman's eye. She was already dead. He put his finger into her eye socket and gouged it out. Ugh. The reason why was simple. He was fascinated by women's eyes. Their beauty stimulated his greed and his desire to possess them. He needed to have them. To make them his own. Driven by this instinctive impulse, he took the woman's eye. From then on, he acquired a grotesque obsession with the eyes of dead women. He was very particular about his need that the eye belonged to a deceased woman. But even being the head of a Yakuza gang, there weren't too many opportunities for him to indulge. His deepest, darkest desire went unfulfilled for years. However, he soon met his ideal partner, the aforementioned psychopath. The Cyclops killer would commit the murder, and Rohan would take the eye. Thus, a mutually beneficial relationship was established. This was the origin of the Cyclops serial killings. Just trying to think, do we, is the, is the, um... Oh, what's, what's his name? Like, number, number 89 or something? Is he gonna be the psychopath? The one that's in jail now? At about the same time, you were assigned to Abyss. The original Cyclops killer had an accomplice. There were two Cyclops killers. And one of them was the former chairman of the Kumakuras, Rohan Kumakura. Rohan committed suicide by jumping to his death one year ago. That means... Pewter, tell me this. One of the original killers is dead, I know that. But that means one remains. Who is he? After his fourth murder, he was arrested by the police. They actually picked him up on other charges. But, in any case, he is currently serving a life sentence in Fuchu Prison. Fuchu Prison? Yes. Is that the one that What's we got the call from? In prison, he doesn't have a name. He is simply called Number 89. Yep. That's the one. Okay, I'm glad I figured that out. I was just, I was just like, if you notice the pause, I was just like thinking like, is that, is that going to be? <laughs> yeah. Number 89. I know who killed Shogun Adami. Well, we obviously can't let him out because that was his condition, wasn't it? Let me out and I'll tell you. But if we let him out, he's going to fucking go murdering again. So. so now you know why I said that that the original Cyclops killer couldn't have committed these crimes. Because one is dead, and the other is behind bars. Neither of them had the opportunity. Okay. Peter looks grimly serious. Um, well. Is this the, is this Ota's mother's place? This is gonna be sad.